Hello. Welcome to I Am Not Your Tour Guide, but I am your host, Starla Skelton. I am super appreciative if you are taking the time to check out this podcast. It is a platform to give travelers an opportunity to open up, share their stories, share their perspectives, even share their convictions that they discovered while traveling. So today I am proud to introduce you to our guest. This man started his photography company, Picks by the Moon, and he has traveled all over the world. And he has also traveled to shoot weddings and events. And I'm just so impressed by you. And I am so happy that you're here today. Thank you for being with us, Aaron. Thank you. Yes, yes. Are you feeling good? Yeah, uh, this is, as we've discussed, this is my very first. So there are nerves, um, direction, constructive, uh, constructive criticism is taken. So hopefully it'll be amazing because <laughs> love you, love our conversations we've always had. So yeah, um, fingers crossed for me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've had some yeah. solid conversations. I've loved some of our conversations. And so 100%. to start this out, earlier I was looking over your Instagram page and uh, a couple yeah. of things on your website. And I was kind of going through and looking at your bio and looking at some of the things you've done. And I was like, you know what? There's one thing I noticed really quickly. And it you are a man of many hairstyles. <laughs> Um, so much so funny that you say that because it, I, there have been so many weight fluctuations and hairstyles. I mean, it's like a chia pet up here. Um, but there's been so many that I actually have a gallery on my phone called Phases of the Moon. That do has you? all of I do. Such a weirdo. It, it's on there. <laughs> no, that's great. I, right now it's kind of long and flowy. What, what would you call this yeah. book again? Well, my buddy, so I used it as a Facebook profile picture not too long ago, and he really kind of solidified it when he's like, his only comment was like, Bobby, oh much. So I, is that it? But, <laughs> oh, but no. the, to be honest, so um, the, the truth behind it is I did leave corporate America after like 17 years and pursued photos full time December of 2019. And like most small business owners, I'm just like, what are certain ways that I can like save money and all that? I cut out haircuts. Well, that is pretty brilliant. I mean, what, that saves you 50 bucks a month, maybe? $45 every two weeks. Oh, um, yeah. okay. Yeah, it, it takes a lot for, the, yeah. So yeah. For all that beauty, takes a lot. <laughs> oh, well, that's your words. No, no. But yes, <laughs> so that that's the reasoning behind it. But um, for lack of a better dad pun, it's it's growing on me. I mean, you know. So. Yeah, no, I like it. It looks good. It looks good. Nah. So, so I I wanted to kind of start us off here. And um, recently, I was reading uh, Dale Carnegie's "How to Win Friends and Influence People," and there's this, yeah, he yeah. quotes he quotes William Winter in this book, and he says, and here's the quote, and I really love it, and I'm gonna read it out loud. The self expression is the dominant necessity of human nature. And when I read that, it, oh man, it just really got me thinking um, about how that relates to our artistic expression and, and, and through travel. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, do you feel that you express yourself through travel? For one, love quotes, and that's brilliant. Love it. Um, that uh, I think, to be honest, I, I, would, I would say like my self-expression I would say it derives from just photos in general. The whole travel aspect is just an amazing perk. Um, so blessed to do and see and meet amazing people like you guys. Um, I don't know. I think that's the, the whole thing. And, and just, I don't know, like just soaking in cultures more than anything, experiencing their food. Um, but just, I don't know, the customs, like, all of it, it's just, it's moving, it's educational, it's, it's so happy. Oh, that's all I can say. I love it. So, so whenever you, uh, let's say you get a job in India and you're going to go film mm -hmm. and photograph somebody's wedding. I know you've done that. So that's why I'm using that, uh, mm -hmm. that reference. So the part where you get on the plane and you're about to take this trip into India and experience something new is that the moment where you're like, 
you start getting that feeling of excitement and where and where you're just, you know, you feel comfortable or is the moment that you actually you break out your camera and you start looking at the world through your lens. Is that more of your moment of peace? Like, where do you find yourself most comfortable? That moment starts for me when I get booked. It's pre-plane ride, it's pre-travel. Pre it starts when I realize that I have the honor of doing something great for someone that captures something amazing, a, a memory, maybe a loss, um, just the humility that that bestows, that they are willing to fly me you know, across the world to do something and just capture anything. I, it, it's hard to put into words. But it, it, humility, it's, it's, it starts before the plane. When I do get on the plane, I, I, love, I love airports. I will go for any flight. I try to get to like Delta Sky Club at least six hours early for free food and drinks. <gasps> six and hours? I do, but I put all of my open galleries that I'm traveling with, I put them all on my laptop and I edit the day away. It's relaxing to me. You can people watch if that's your thing. But um, yeah, I just go and just soak it all in and relax and get, you know, in a good headspace. And then uh, I, I sleep most of the time on the plane, you know, but so yeah, so the plane, I don't know, I just, I just love it. But yeah, when you get there, there is, you know, there are some like, Somewhat nerves and anxiety, especially when you're not familiar with cultures and, I, you know, language wise. I mean, I can barely speak English, so I, I know no other languages. Um, but uh, so there's there's different variables that make it challenging, but it's never overwhelming because it's excitement, too. So, yeah. Yes, I love that. So as as a photographer, which that's that's what mm -hmm. you that, that's your role in life right now as a photographer. Yep. Do you ever struggle to find that balance between taking pictures of these incredible moments and these memories that people are going to have forever and then living in the moment? Like, is there, you know, I know you have to find that balance of like, okay, I can't always be behind a camera. I have to live in the moment as well. Like, is that a struggle for you or does it just kind of flow naturally and organically? The, so I'm in, I'm my 14th year in doing photos. Um, so th there's definitely nerves are not really a thing as much anymore because, um, th there is a certain confidence now and I, and I'm so appreciative of that. And, uh, you know, and, and like anyone in what you do, if it's photos, if it's podcasting, you know, whatever it is, it's just, you know, it takes practice and, and all of that. Um, but I do like firmly believe there does have to be that balance. And I think what I have to try and be cognizant of more than anything is, is you don't like you ensure you don't miss the life happening around you just because you are comfortable and hiding behind a camera. Mm. Like, I don't want to miss the moment because I know what I'm being entrusted to do. So, right. and, uh, and, you know, pictures, you know, our reflection, their life and their, you know, a frozen moment in time, you know, and like, you're just capturing something that can never again be replicated in that particular moment. And I, I take pride in that, like wholeheartedly, like seriously. Right. Right. So do you think that people that travel in general, let's just take somebody that, you know, travels a couple times a year, like I would say is pretty average. Sure. Do you think that them spending a lot of time on their phone or a lot of time taking pictures, do you think people these days, and I hate to say it like that, but uh, it's such a, you know, we haven't had our smartphones forever, right? Like right, this is right. something, you know, we haven't had smart, smart smartphones for more than, I don't know what they've been out, 10, 11 years that everybody's just had one. Do you yeah, think yeah. That, that, do you think they have become a distraction at all for other people? I think it's all about perspective. Like, are you capturing it because you never want to forget? Or are you capturing it for social likes? You know, so I think it's all about perspective. Um, and, and I'm incredibly guilty of that. Like I was with your brother last week in Guatemala and my cell phone, I don't think I've ever pulled it out more. It was almost embarrassing. I think I had to apologize to Ryan. Um, I just, you know, last time I was there, it was to shoot the wedding. It was where, you know, this time was like, I am, I'm with my friends again. And my God, this place is beautiful. And I just, I went picture happy. I just, it, so yeah, I think it depends on the day. I think it depends on the person, the perspective. Um, but yeah, I think that 
you know what i saw this little um this little uh clip uh, it's probably like buzzfeed or something like that where it was like a thousand people in the frame and every single one you know had their cell phones pointed at whatever they were looking at probably a sporting event i have no idea but there was this little adorable old lady and she was just watching and she's like she's living her best life she's just in the moment and i i I don't know that stuck with me i loved it but i still was not just with my cell phone last week so but right (laughs) So I didn't learn yeah, anything, and, but I do like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it is something that we all uh, struggle with, you know, just finding that balance. And I've said that before on here on this podcast, finding that balance is super important when it comes to cell phones and travel, because you don't, yeah. you, you don't want to, you don't want to miss out on opportunities and, and meeting new people and talking to other people. Like when you go to, into an internet, they used to be called internet cafes. I, I think they're just called coffee oh, shops yeah. now or cafes, yeah. you know, but um, you have access to Wi-Fi most of the time, which can be very helpful at times. But then I love the little cafes where you go into and you'll see a sign and it says, we don't have Wi-Fi, talk to each other. And, you know, I know that's not, you know, I know that's not great in every aspect of life, but sometimes you just need to be reminded of that. Like, hey, talk to the people around you, meet somebody new. And that's when you, you know, you start talking to somebody and you're like, wow, they're from Australia and they've been to 105 countries. And how cool is it just to hear their story, you know, as opposed to scrolling and posting about what you did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So I think it's a good balance that we got to continue to look for. So yeah. you've been all over the place. You've been all over the world. Do you have a trip in mind that stands out as unforgettable? Okay. That's a, uh, that's a tough question. Like in a good way or bad way? Ooh, who? See, now that's a good question. I'm going to say either or, which one are you feeling? Which one, which story came to your mind first, the good one or the bad one? It would have to be good. You know, I'm a cheesy guy. I'm like overly optimistic, you know, so that, that's just who I am. So I, I would have to focus on the positive, but it, that, that is a very tough question. I mean, uh, let's, let's talk about Guatemala again. Um, I know it's fresh in the head because just got back, but that was my very first inter like destination wedding. And so, and it, and it whole, it all derived from, I did a maternity shoot here in Atlanta and it ended up being a friend that Katie went to high school with. She liked the pictures, and it, I, I'm sure I'm, like, butchering this, but to my knowledge, um, this young lady's like, hey, or, or Katie reached out to her and says, hey, does this guy, you know, do destination weddings or whatever? And Katie and I talked to the phone. I think there were a few email exchanges, whatever the case may have been. I mean, that was in 2016, and, you know, can't remember exactly. But I didn't even know what Ryan and Katie looked like. I was just given an address in Antigua, Guatemala, where I don't speak the language. I didn't know the culture. And I was told to knock on this gate at 10 a.m. I love that. And and just for the listener's reference, Ryan and Katie are my brother and sister-in-law. And when they got married in Guatemala, this is what, this is the story that he's referring to, that he just showed up to some gate and had no idea even who they were. That's pretty adventurous. It was a beautiful. that that's adventurous yeah. on your part. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, I look back on it now. I, I would still make, change nothing. But I mean, uh, I don't know. It and it was just so funny that not even knowing what these guys look like, and it ended up being one of the greatest days. So much so that friendships were developed. Two years later, we spent Christmas and New Year's in Belgium together. You know, just went to Guatemala. And when they're in Atlanta doing events, you know, still show up and get to see them occasionally. And it's just so funny how that works. I I just, it's why I freaking love photography. I I don't know. It's just, not only does it like feed a passion, but it's just life experience. And I I just, I dig that. Oh, yeah. No, that's awesome. So uh, going to Guatemala, not you know, it was your first international, not an international trip, but your first trip where you're going to go do a wedding. Um, yes. And then it kind of opened up some doors for you, right? Because you've kind of been mm. all over and done quite a few more weddings abroad since then. Well, and not not just that, but here in my hometown of, hometown of Atlanta, 
um, a few of the bridesmaids and groomsmen, I photograph, I think, three of their weddings just from that introduction. So, um, and done many family pictures. Like, it's just, it, it's so funny how that works. It, it's it's and amazing. As, and as, 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 in, as Antigua as your backdrop for those pictures, and then my brother and his wife. <laughs> They're, yeah, I mean, they're no. both they're just both so pretty people like i'm so mad at them <laughs> i know right <laughs> it's really annoying and my sister-in-law who just had two babies i'm like could you stop being so beautiful like you just had two children <laughs> <laughs> she knows i love her um Absolutely. so oh of course so uh, you've had great trips you've had wonderful trips have you ever regretted taking a trip good question um I don't think there's ever been a regret. So uh, it, it, this is kind of a twofold response, I guess. Um, I, of course, like many of us all, uh, you know, like in regard to like delays, missing flights, I've had lost luggage before, never my camera bag. So that's that's important to point out. Um, <laughs> thank God. Thank um, oh, my God, I just did that. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, You're a 21 year old girl trapped in a not 21 year girl's body. Oh, that felt like a 40, 30 year old, old man joke. Love you. Mean it. Um, anyway, <laughs> but yes, like all of those little nuances, of course, you know, they can be, you know, frustrating and all that, but yeah, unequivocally, the answer is no, like, I, no, I, I've never regretted any, even despite, you know, certain like min, very minuscule frustrations. Um, yeah, there's not one like city, country, continent, like anything that I would ever not have wanted to experience what I've been blessed to experience thus far. So definitely um, answer is no. But uh, um, one funny, uh, funny aspect is uh, this is not a regret, but just kind of a fun thing that happened is um, in late 2016, uh, went to go buy a or lease a vehicle. Right. And so everything seemed to be going well and all of that, but the finance advisor or manager, whatever you call their role, um, they came back about like 40 minutes after we agreed on pricing and all of that. And um, they said that they ran into something that they had yet to experience in him and a couple other people within the finance department and even the, the salesman who is you know, uh, handling the car with me is when they ran my background, um, my passport picture showed up with a big fat red X on it on their computer screen. And no. so I had got flagged by the government officiated OFAC division, which is the Office of Foreign Assets Control, AKA the potential funding of terrorism. And so wow. it was a crazy experience. And of course I was leasing a black Audi, a freaking European drug car. Um, but <laughs> uh, so it, it was, it ended up being uh, like a four and a half hour process. So I made this list. Um, and I had to get on the, you know, like a couple of 800 numbers and sign like 30 documents that I'm not purchasing this vehicle for the use of international export and, and all of that. And so it took about four months and they basically ended up reviewing my social media and I'm like, oh, this guy just has a camera. He was just, you know, it, the reason I got tagged, what they told me was because it was like, I think like 12 countries in eight months or something, which was unorthodox for my lifestyle at the time. But then obviously right. it opened a floodgate here forward. But um, yeah, I have made a terrorist watch list in my lifetime. Wow. Aren't you fancy? Oh, um, something. I was definitely more excited about that than buying a car. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I made like, the OFAC list. Oh man. It's so funny. Whenever you start traveling, just the the stories that come along with it and and you just start getting excited about little things that you wouldn't have before like making the OFAC list and like um, who who all can say that <laughs> I know right right you know it's it, and it's funny the joy you get from like that teaching that passport stamp you know when they stamp you going oh my in God. And you, just, you know how do you it, feel it about does that something stamp? to my soul and yes. I get so mad at the countries that don't do the stamps by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am right? never coming here again. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then I swear, I don't even make it two steps away and I'm looking at my passport, like, to see what it looked like and making sure there was enough ink in there, you know, because I want to be able to read the country name, right? All right. So question for you. Have you ever gone back to the TSA agent? Mm. 
or, or customs agent, excuse me. I get, that's like, a really, I am not happy with your stamp, sir. That's a really good, that's hysterical. I, I, you know what? I wouldn't put it past somebody who really I loves a passport you would stamp. Do that. Like, you know, maybe, how about this? Let me give you a, an answer you're probably not going to like. In my 20s, I probably would have gone back and been like, um, excuse me, sir, this is a source of pride for me. Like, if I could please just get you to restamp this. But now, one, um, I don't, at this point in my life, even though I love it and we joke, I don't need the stamp in order right. to feel the 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 passion that I feel for traveling and experience new places. And, right. um, you know, well, that's that's one of the reasons. And the second reason is I just feel like security is heightened and I don't want them to oh. ever be like, excuse me, ma'am, uh, you're rude. This is this is uncalled for. And we're going to stick you in a room for four hours and, you know, talk about, you know, investigate you and talk about why you're here. Like, I don't want to risk not being able to make it into that country. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I don't that sounds like the worst. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to come off as a jerk or anything that's going to, you know, get me in trouble. I mean, you know, if it was something that I've really felt passionate about, yes, I would say something to TSA, Border Patrol, all that good stuff. But no, for a passport stamp at this point in my life, I'd be all right. No, no, I'm I'm definitely the same. But I will say this. Um, when I had an expired passport, I did feel a little bit of sadness when it expired. They put the little hole through it. You can't use it and you're just starting all over again. Something like, about it, that hole through it. When they send it back to you with that hole through yeah, it, you're like, ugh. It, it, you just put it, a hole through my it hurt soul. My, yeah, it hurt my heart a little bit. I know that's so silly. And it, like first world problems, I know. But it, it yeah, it, it, it stung for like at least three minutes of my life. So <laughs> No, I agree with you. There, there's no worse feeling than that fresh passport. Passport after you had a full one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know? such an accomplishment. You're like, what are these crispy pages? You know, I need for I need it to be crinkled and oh yeah, totally well, for sure. No, and I'm that person who likes character in anything. Like I, I like the book, like folding the pages. I like the creases. Like I don't know, I, I'm that guy. I, I I want my passport to feel the same. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. Um, for people that have um have a desire to travel and that want yeah. to get out there more and do international travel. And I know a lot of people who do domestic travel and that's amazing. I'm just saying you might, you know, some people might have a, a bit of an itch to get outside of the country as well. So for yes, those people yes. that are, are trying to get out of the country, do you have any just, you know, average travel advice for them, for people just, you know, to kind of calm their nerves, just what advice would you give them? Do you want my answer? <laughs> I want your answer. Arrive to the airport vastly early. <laughs> hit up the <a> Sky Club. <laughs> have a couple drinks. Have some. They have great soups there, by the way. I, that's that's an attraction for me. I, I know that's soups? strange. Yeah, your your brother made fun of me a lot last week because of my love of soups. Um, Wait, hold on. What kind of thing. soups are we talking here? It all depends like all on the day. It, well, it ranges every visit. They they trade it out so yeah <laughs> i know wow. that's so random but it's a thing like i i don't know um but yeah arrive early to where you're not rushed i mean that that's that's big to me because like if i'm ever running late to something that's that stems anxiety with me that's just how i i you know um roll personally um but yeah it just arrive a little bit early you know you know grab you some stuff um to me Editing is my therapy, so that's what I do personally. But if you like to read a book, if you just want to go watch people, especially internationally, where you can just see people in around the world with their amazing attire and their customs, like it's such a beautiful thing to see. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, just arriving early, take as much pressure off of yourself as you can, because, I mean, even people who have traveled, it, it is a stressful thing. It, it can it can really, you know, get to you. So, I mean, it's uh I don't know, but I also love that aspect too. Like, mm. I don't know, like fight through it. You feel like it's such a sense of accomplishment. Um, but yeah, um, and I would say as far as people that are wanting to travel, most importantly is take lots of pics when you get there. I mean, that's my thing. So yeah, um, yeah so yeah. 
So yeah, again, all about the person, but yeah, I, I think that that's what has really established a, a big comfort because so many places, um, I, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm saying. And if we needed to do a plug right now in, in I am not your tour guide, Go for it. Google translate. It has changed <laughs> my world. Has it? Yeah, um, a cool part last week was the the taxi driver. He was amazing, um, Pablo or what? Um, I, I'm blanking on his name. My apologies. I think it was Pablo, but um, he had Google Translate open. I did in the back of the taxi, and we had about an hour and forty minute ride to the airport. And the entire hour and forty minutes, I think it surpassed an hour and forty, even though we only drove an hour and forty. But he did his thing. I did my thing. We responded. Overall, he owns a um, helicopter tour company, and he knows my love of, like, aerial photography and all that. So he gave me two passes the next time I visit that um, me and a guest can jump up in the helicopter and, you know, do uh, – this is still Antigua that I'm referring to – but to do aerial pictures of the volcanoes and stuff like that. So no. he was amazing But it was because of Google Translate. So that's my plug. Wow. No, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. And, you know, even, um, even though you're using an app, I'm not hating on app at all. I think, I think that's amazing that you had that experience, but it's pretty, that just goes to show you that if you just make that effort, make that effort to communicate with somebody, mm -hmm. to have a conversation, you, I am blown away at just the people that you meet, the, the kindness of the people that you meet, you know, you just, it, you, have a, you took the time, you took the time to have a conversation and you got two free tickets out of it. Not saying that's why you do it, but still, isn't it pretty amazing? That's exactly why I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I will say that like, I have just a, like, I'm a, I'm a sap. I'm a cheesy guy. I have such a genuine love of people. I knew we were going to be in the car for a while. And when he started talking, I'm like, Oh, yeah, this is the thing. And so I just, I, I like that we had something that bonded us. And when we got to the airport, like he put his number in my phone, like he's legit. And I, I think I just want to be his friend. Like, yeah, it yeah. was, it was a great <laughs> car ride. So that's, that's awesome. And, you know, to one of my favorite things about meeting people when I'm traveling is that even though you're different, you're like, same, same. You know, like we had, even though you come from different cultures and different side of the world, I mean, you can still find something in common with anybody anywhere, right? Yeah, I do in my heart of hearts, um, and hopefully this is not over optimistic, I think most people are genuinely good. And if you get to see them in their element, their culture, you know, showing off what they have worked their entire lives for, hopefully you know, surpassing what their parents even wanted for them. Like, I know this sounds like a little Hallmark card type um, descriptor, but it's just, it's how I feel. I, and I think that travel can really, really bring that out. And, you know, I think that, you know, it's important to, you know, always, always carry with you kind of more of that sense of humility and um, just knowing like, for one, where we are, you know, um, you know, we live, you know, relatively close to one another, like, we are so blessed. And there's so many people that just aren't. And when you get to see them take pride in what they have, like, it's, it's beautiful, it's heartbreaking, but it's magical. I, I just, right. it's one of my favorite aspects of right. anywhere I go. And, you know, you've said the word humility uh, a couple times in this conversation. And whenever I can yeah. get my brother on this podcast, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to do a deep dive with him on that because he's one of my favorite people to talk um, to talk to this about with, on this subject. But, you know, I want to discuss it with you. What um, do you think it's hard to go all these places, you've been to all these places, you've seen all these things. I'm not saying you're better than everybody else, but I'm just saying, are there ever moments where you're like, God, I'm kind of awesome. Like I'm kind of a, a badass. Like, you know, like the stuff I've done and the places I've seen, like I'm kind of awesome. Like, is it kind of hard to reel it in sometimes? We are referring to Ryan. <laughs> 
because no, he but, is. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he he is one of the coolest people I've ever met for sure. But I, I'm I'm asking this question directly at you because you are an awesome individual. You're an awesome person. You, you've seen things, but you do have this uh, this air of humility. Is that hard for you to keep? No, I, I know this. I don't know if this will sound silly or not, but like you know, like my upbringing, it was not of. It, it was the greatest upbringing I could ever imagine but there was nothing glamorous about it at all. You know, small town, um, you know, not money driven, uh, had amazing mother who I'm, you know, amazingly close with even to this day. And so that's what we talk about. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Carla. <laughs> um, but no, I, I'm grateful for that because everything that I've experienced, you know, um, up to this point and more than likely here forward is just, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Just, it just gives you like his love and a zest for life. And I, I am like in my heart of hearts, like truly like grateful for that. So I think it all stemmed from child to, you know, going through some hard times in, uh, you know, my 20s, um, uh, 30s is when I, you know, I didn't pick up a camera until age 29 years old. Um, wow. Yeah. So no, no schooling, nothing like that. But my buddy Ryan just, he asked, he was starting a wedding photography company um, with a business partner of his. And he asked if I would join them one day and kind of do that, you know, where you hold the off camera light to get some creative aspects. And I did it. And then a wedding or two later, I assisted him again. And he uh, he said, look, no pressure. I'm going to handle all your settings for you. Um, and then, uh, but if you're comfortable, I'd love for you to shoot some wide angle shots during the ceremony. That's all it took. It it fell in love about a year into it. I, you know, invested in my own equipment and all that good stuff. And uh, uh, taught, taught myself Photoshop by clicking buttons and screwing a lot of stuff up. Um, and then that's just, how you it, learn, it was, right? That's how you learn. It's how I learn. Um, cause I could, I can listen to someone all day long, but I, I, I'm a, I need to be hands, you know, hands on, but um, anyway, I, I digress, but, uh, yeah, it's just the camera changed my world. Um, and you know, even what difficult times there were like, my goodness, what's happened since age 30 and, you know, I'm 43 now, but what's happened beyond is just. God, it almost feels like undeserving. Like it's, it's amazing. It's so cool. That's awesome. And I totally think you deserve it, but I love the humility well, thank you. That, that you exude <laughs> for sure. So that was a great get, segue. Go ahead. I get that from Carla, by the way. <laughs> That's mom, <laughs> ma, mom, shout out again. Mama Carla. Uh, so Mama that was Carla? a great segue into my next question for you. I'm ready. So okay. for, for any novice photographers, okay, they're just starting out, they got a love for it, just starting out, and they're looking to get some practice, you know, they want to practice their camera skills abroad, right? Do you have any camera packing tips that you have found to be useful for you? Like, for example, let me just throw one out there. Do you take it always as your carry-on? Always, no question. They are not putting my gear under a plane. Okay. So like, that doesn't depart I, I'm from not, you. I'm not a very assertive person. I stand strong on that. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just the money alone that you've invested in it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's, that's like your baby. But yeah, do you have any other little tips that might be good for them if they're uh, traveling with a camera for a first time? Oh, um. So I've done it two different ways. If I know like I'm going to do like a wedding, I want all of my gear with me. So my regular pack is going to be with me. Um, and so uh, everything is very cushioned, very formatted um, in a very OCD way. <laughs> it's like it's there. There's no changing the way it's all packed up. Um, if it's for more leisure, per se, um, and you just throw it in a backpack so you don't have to carry, like my camera bag is 47 pounds. You know, my camera with my primary lens and flash is 8.4 pounds. So it, it, it adds up, it gets heavy. Um, wow. So if you're going, if it's not for business, something you're hired to do, you're just more doing it for leisure. Um, I, I do 
agree in like packing light. Um, it's still going to be with me on the plane, but um, down silly, um, I separate it. I wrap them in towels and throw them in a backpack with my MacBook and all of that. And just where it's a little bit lighter. Um, and if I don't need all my equipment, I'm not going to take it. Okay. All so right. So if you're, sure you're not going to use it. If you're not going to use certain parts of it, leave it home. I, I do. Just make sure it's mm -hmm. protected. So. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, so of everything that you have been doing for these last, uh, what, what age were you when you picked up a camera? 29, 28? 29. So this is my 14th 29. year. 14th year. So in the last 14 years of picking up a camera, uh, to, to where you are now, what do you think motivates and inspires you most to be the best that you can be? Like be the best photographer that you can be. People. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just when you, again, I kind of reverted to it earlier when you're just, you're capturing a moment, you know, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's not, but if you can do it and do it to the best of your ability, if you're domestic, if you're international, regardless, just give every ounce of your being to what, you know that you were put on this planet to do. And that's where I discovered I was supposed to be just a few years ago when I decided to do this full time. Um, and it just, I don't know, it brought about love. It brought about friendships. Um, I mean, I could go on and on and, you know, sound like a Hallmark movie in regard to that, but it's just, I don't know. It's just, it, it changed my life. It changed my world. Oh, I love that. I love that for you and you deserve it all for sure. Um, so just to kind of to pivot here for a second, I am all about not only do I like getting down to the nitty gritty of why people travel and, and to hear the, 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 the passion behind it, but I also like to ask funny kind of sometimes annoying questions when it comes to travel because you know how like I we all it, go yes. through stuff like we all go through stuff when we're traveling so I kind of have like I have four rapid fire questions for you and again oh. if you want to elaborate you can elaborate if not okay but okay. but I but I wrote some down and they all revolve around travel so you ready for I this? am so intrigued right now by the way okay <laughs> okay here we go what's more annoying to you the person who stands up on the plane immediately after the stamp, the seatbelt sign goes off. You know how they like stand up and then get in the aisle yeah. right away. And I'm like, yeah. move out of the way because there's an old lady who needs to get her bag, but you just moved right in front of her. So is that person more <laughs> annoying, annoying to you? Or is it the person who claps really loud as soon as you land? I have never experienced the clapping. What? Are you serious? <laughs> No, really? I don't think I have. So my answer is the latter. It's the person yeah. who stands up because that happens every flight. Right? And I don't know. I feel like there should be some just etiquette. And, and you know, when, when Ryan and Katie, my brother, and, uh, and his wife used to live in Taipei, Taiwan, I went to, they, they taught there, they taught English there. And I went to visit them one time. And one of the coolest things I saw when I went to go visit their school was they had this mock up airplane in the school and they, and this was elementary school and mm -hmm. they were teaching the kids how to take a passport, go through customs, get on an airplane, buckle their seat. Oh, and they were cool. also, yeah. And they were also teaching them like etiquette. You know, and I just feel like whether you're a stand up or in get in the aisle person or not, um, what we can and we can disagree on that. That's fine. But um, just <laughs> etiquette, airplane etiquette. I'm like, man, they should do that in schools here. It doesn't even have to be like a whole semester well, worth. But, yes, you know, just, yes. just how to travel. How about how to go to the grocery store? How to not flick people off whenever you're, you know, trying to pass them and you're in the fast lane, you know, just little stuff. It just yeah. seems like etiquette would be something that we would even talk about, but I feel like we don't. No, I get it. And well, and educate me on this aspect is the clapping thing. Cause it's like an anxious flyer and they're grateful they landed or. 
it, from okay. my perspective, that's what I'm getting. But I've okay. been on planes where like everybody claps, you know, and I'm just like, I have never <laughs> experienced that ever. <laughs> At, next time you're talking to one of your friends that travels a lot, ask them. Ask them if they've been on planes where everybody claps when you land. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, it's really funny. Okay. And I don't know why it gets on my nerves. And again, I am a chill traveler, but these are just things like on the inside they bother me. Mm -hmm. I would never be a jerk about it and be like, why are you clapping? Like, that's not me. But I'm just I'm just letting you know what really goes on in the inside of my head. Why yeah. on the outside, I'm just like, yes, I'm very thankful we landed too. <laughs> you, know, you know, so, okay, that was number one. Number two. Okay, I'm would intrigued. You, would, you, would you rather share a hostel room with someone who likes to smell all natural, you know, doesn't use the deodorant, doesn't really like to bathe a lot, uh, you know, the hippie type, or... Someone who just talks nonstop. Okay, so this is a interesting fact about me. I have like hardly zero taste of or a zero sense of smell. So I wouldn't smell that person. So I'm fine. <laughs> really? If, if there is talk, no, and it's not even COVID related or anything like that. It's been my entire life. That's um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I like always like shower every day, like because I never know. I can't smell me, so I try to always be good. Um, oh, but yeah, wow. never. Yeah. So the talker, <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my okay. Answer. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Here we go. Number three. In a fifteen foot proximity, would you rather photograph rhinos or snakes? Oh, I have photographed snakes and it's been really beautiful each time. Um, really? I'm going to say snakes. I'm going to say snakes. Yeah. Like in, in any I particular think so. country? Um, no, uh, there were snakes in India, um, but the, the biggest one was like a more of an editorial fashion shoot here in Atlanta. But yeah, I was hired to do like a sexy Adam and Eve type shoot where the model was, you know, had a nine and a half foot Burmese python wrapped around her. She had a little apple actually. Like, yeah, so it was, it was a beautiful shot. Um, but I, I would definitely, I mean, rhinos, they can charge at any time. I'm not, it, yeah, yeah, snakes, 100%. Okay, snakes, okay, all right. Okay, and the last one, I kind of, um, <clears throat> this is getting a little bit more detailed. If oh, you okay. felt like you you felt like you had an emergency bathroom break moment come over you, you know, it hits you, your stomach starts grumbling. It's like, oh Lord, like I I, I gotta go. Would you rather Ooh. be? <laughs> would you rather be <laughs> in a jeep tour in the salt flats of Bolivia, where you're looking out and it's like miles and miles of flatness, you know, very flat. So is there a branch? Is there a tree for, you know, at least a good more 10 miles for you to get behind? No, it's all salt flats. Okay. That's your first scenario. Okay. Or would you rather be in a lancha, you know, the little boats going from Panahachel to San Marcos when you're on Lake Atitlan in Guatemala? So you're on the lancha. You still got about 45 minutes before you get to that town. Would you rather be on a lancha when that hits or would you rather be on the salt flats when that hits? I'm going to pick salt flats hmm. because I would try to mold my mindset to make me look like I was a cat and I'm just in a big ass litter box. Uh, <laughs> and then probably just use my drawers and I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> give, give me the desert. <laughs> so you don't want to hang it off. You don't want to hang your bum off the back of a boat. I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I would do my <laughs> business and use my feet to kick it and cover it like my childhood cat did. <laughs> I tell you what, there's not, there's a couple things humbling in life to me. Um, one of them as a 42 year old woman is um, chin hairs that I have to pluck. That is very humbling. Oh yeah. Look at but mine. You see this crap? <laughs> And I'm, and but, I'm a 43-year-old woman, so. 
But the most humbling thing is ha- is like having extreme diarrhea when you're in a group. Like I remember one time I was hiking up Acatenango in Gua- in Guatemala and I was with a group of people and I got so sick. I just remember holding on to a tree and the tree was like on a cliff, you know? Oh god. So I- yeah, it, and it it was going down because I, I I didn't at the time I didn't have my little shovel to dig a hole so I could do use that and then bury it and it was pitch black outside and I had my flashlight thank goodness but I just remember holding on to that tree trying not to let go while I was using the bathroom and there's people you know five feet six feet away and I'm just like you know I I occupy such a little part of this world like oh my god this is so embarrassing (laughs) you know like it's very humbling to have those moments you know Uh, I don't know it like that (laughs) (laughs) and you know the diarrhea actually is in fact hereditary hereditary yeah it runs in your genes oh my god (laughs) 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 that was the most dad joke I've ever heard. <laughs> oh my god, I can't with you. You're, oh my you're god, that's welcome. so funny. Uh, it's yeah, so stupid. Oh, it's, it's so stupid. That was amazing. Uh, this may be a redo. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's fine. That's fine. We can do a redo. Okay. Okay. So, Aaron, tonight was awesome talking to you. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for. You know, just giving me some real thoughts and 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 real convictions that you have on travel, and and you know, just sharing with us how much you love infusing photography into travel, and and that was just that was really fun for me to hear. I love I love hearing people's perspectives on travel. So right now is your time. Give us a little plug, Aaron. Tell us how if you know somebody's having their third wedding or somebody's going to graduate <laughs> or some you know or you know they want to do a renewal of vows abroad, how would they get in touch with you? All right. So no pressure at all regarding that. Um <laughs> but no, um first off, Starla, amazing I am not your tour guide for one is the greatest name ever. I love it. So um, as as nervous as I was to do this, this was uh, this was fantastic. So thank you for having me and your time and all of that. Um, yeah, uh, I am Aaron Moon. Uh, Picksbythemoon.com uh, is the business. Uh, play off the last name. I know. Um, but yeah, just uh, located in Atlanta, but not limited to that city, my city, which I love, um, travel, travel everywhere. And I'm blessed to have some, you know, um, good options to come to wherever I need to be. Uh, yeah, as far as like, I, I do get the question, like photography wise, you know, what specialty and all that. And it's, I don't know. I, I just love it all. So, you know, uh, weddings, fa- huge fashion editorial fan. I, I, that may be my my, my, my fave bread and butter, if you will. Um, and that, that statement made me sound a lot more confident than I probably am, but you know, we can cut that out. Um, but, uh, (laughs) but yeah, so no, I just, I just love photos, have a super passion for it. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot going on that's going to carry me, um, into, you know, hopefully this next year to continue to grow it and all of that. And yeah, weddings, um, do a ton of like high school seniors, stuff like that. Um, headshots around Atlanta, again, uh, destination weddings throughout wherever you're willing to take me. Cause I would be honored. Um, but yeah, just, uh, I just love every aspect, love people and, uh, yeah, just grateful for what I do. So I just have to say thank you again. Thank you so much. You are awesome. You are amazing. Picks by the moon. We will link his information in the bio below. You can easily reach out to him, get in touch with him. And uh, I can attest that his work is pretty phenomenal. So thank you, Aaron, for everything. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, my dear. Bye. Bye.